The Battle of Surabaya was fought between regular infantry and militia of the Indonesian nationalist movement and British and British Indian troops as a part of the Indonesian national revolution against the re-imposition of Dutch colonial rule. The peak of the battle was in November 1945. The battle was the largest single battle of the revolution, and became a national symbol of Indonesian resistance. Considered a heroic effort by Indonesians, the battle helped galvanize Indonesian, and international support for Indonesian independence. The 10th of November is celebrated annually as Heroes Day. By the time the Allied forces arrived at the end of October 1945, the Pemuda foothold in Surabaya City was described as a strong unified fortress. Fighting broke out on 30 October after the British commander, Brigadier A.W.S. Malaby was killed in a skirmish. The British retaliated with a coordinated sweep that began on 10 November, under the cover of air attacks. Although the colonial forces largely captured the city in three days, the poorly armed Republicans fought for three weeks, and thousands died as the population fled to the countryside. Despite the military defeat suffered by the Republicans and a loss of manpower and weaponry that would severely hamper Republican forces for the rest of the revolution, the battle and defense mounted by the Indonesians galvanized the nation in support of independence and helped garner international attention. For the Dutch, it removed any doubt that the Republic was not simply a gang of collaborators without popular support. It also had the effect of convincing Britain that wisdom lay on the side of neutrality in the revolution, within a few years in fact, Britain would support the Republican cause in the United Nations. Chapter 1 Background. On 17 August 1945, Sukarno and Hatta declared the independence of Indonesia in Jakarta, two days after the Japanese Emperor's surrender in the Pacific. As the news about the independence declaration spread throughout the archipelago, ordinary Indonesians felt a sense of freedom that led most to regard themselves as pro-Republican. In the following weeks, power vacuums existed, both from outside and within Indonesia, creating an atmosphere of uncertainty, but also one of opportunity. On 19 September 1945, a group of Dutch internees supported by the Japanese raised the Dutch flag outside the Hotel Yamato in Surabaya, East Java. This provoked nationalist Indonesian militia, who overran the Dutch and Japanese and tore off the blue part of the Dutch flag, changing it into the Indonesian flag. The leader of the Dutch group, Mr. Pleigman, was killed because of mass anger. The senior Japanese commander in Surabaya, Vice Admiral Shibata Yekiro, threw his support behind the Republicans and gave Indonesians ready access to arms. On 3 October, he surrendered to a Dutch Navy captain, the first Allied representative to arrive. Yekiro ordered his forces to hand over their remaining weapons to the Indonesians. The Indonesians were expected to hand them to the newly arrived Allied troops but did not do so. British forces brought in a small Dutch military contingent which it termed the Netherlands Indies Civil Administration. The British became worried about the increasing boldness and apparent strength of the nationalists, who attacked demoralized Japanese garrisons across the archipelago with rudimentary weapons such as bamboo spears to seize their arms. The Bamboo Spear Monument is still a common feature in Indonesian cities, for example Jakarta, Surabaya, and Pontianak. The main goals of British troops in Surabaya were seizing weapons from Japanese troops and Indonesian militia, taking care of former prisoners of war, and sending the remaining Japanese troops back to Japan. In September and October 1945 a series of incidents took place involving pro-Dutch Eurasians, and atrocities were committed by Indonesian mobs against European internees. In late October and early November, the leadership of the mass Muslim organizations Nard Lechel Ulama and Masumi declared that war in defense of the Indonesian motherland was holy war, and thus an obligation for all Muslims. Kiai and their students began to stream into Surabaya from Islamic boarding schools throughout East Java. The charismatic Bung Tomo made use of local radio to encourage an atmosphere of fanatical revolutionary fervor across the city. 
6,000 British Indian troops were sent into the city on 25 October to evacuate European internees and within three days fighting began. After heavy fighting between the British Indian forces and around 20,000 Indonesian armed regulars of the newly formed People's Security Army and mobs of 70,000 to 140,000 people, the British flew in the influential President Sikano, Vice President Hatta, and his minister Zamir Sjarifuddin, and a ceasefire was achieved on 30 October. Chapter 2 Prelude On 26 October 1945, Brigadier A.W.S. Malaby reached an agreement with Mr. Suryo, the Republic of Indonesia's governor of East Java, that the British would not ask Indonesian troops, slash militia to hand over their weapons. An apparent misunderstanding about the agreement between British troops in Jakarta and Malaby's troops in Surabaya was to have serious ramifications. Initially, British troops in the city comprised some 6,000 strong lightly armed British Indian soldiers from the 49th Infantry Brigade of the 23rd Indian Division. When the battle reached its peak, the British sent in additional troops which consisted of 24,000 fully armed soldiers from the 5th Indian Division, 24 USM-4 Sherman medium tanks, along with a similar number of M3 Stuart-like tanks, 24 battle-ready aircraft, together with two British Royal Navy cruiser ships and three accompanying destroyer escorts. Indonesian forces consisted of 20,000 soldiers, from the newly formed Tentara Kiman and Riyadh from its East Java Regional Command, and an estimated 100,000 to 120,000 irregulars and militias. The TKR was formed partly by the former members of PETA, a semi-military organization during the Japanese occupation and a few local officers of the former NIL. The irregulars consisted of pro-independence mobs, armed with rifles, swords, and bamboo spears. Some of their weapons were taken from surrendered Japanese troops. Chapter 3, Rattle. Chapter 3 Section 1, Beginning. On 27 October 1945, a British plane from Jakarta dropped leaflets over Surabaya urging all Indonesian troops and militia to surrender their weapons. The leaders of the Indonesian troops and militia were angered, seeing it as a breaking of the agreement reached with Malabi earlier. On 28 October 1945, they attacked the British troops in Surabaya, killing 200 soldiers. On 30 October the British flew Sukarno, Mohammed Hatta, and Amir Sari Fuddin Harahap into Surabaya to possibly negotiate a ceasefire. A ceasefire was negotiated with Major General Hawthorne and Brigadier Malaby, and immediately adhered to. Fighting, however, soon recommenced due to confused communications and mistrust between the two sides, leading to the famed Battle of Surabaya. Chapter 3 Section 2 Death of Brigadier Malaby on 30 October 1945, Brigadier A.W.S. Malaby, the British Brigade Commander in Surabaya, was travelling about Surabaya to spread the news about the new agreement to his troops. At this time, Malaby's team were forbidden to carry any weapons except hand grenades. Later while patrolling, they received information that there was a mass of Indonesian militia advancing to International Bank near Jumbotan Mera. The team headed to the area but were trapped by shooting between Dutch soldiers who guarded the bank and local militias. When his car approached the British troops post in the international building near the Jambotan Mera, it was surrounded by Indonesian Republican militia. Shortly after, Malaby was shot and killed by the militia under confused circumstances. Captain R. C. Smith, who was in the stationary car, reported that a young Republican suddenly shot and killed Malaby after a short conversation. Smith then reported throwing a grenade from the car in the direction of where he thought the shooter had hidden. Although he was not sure whether or not it hit its target, the explosion caused the back seat of the car to ignite. Other accounts, according to the same source, stated that it was the explosion and not a shooter that killed Malaby. The remaining members of Malaby's team ran and jumped into the Kalimas River. The death of Malaby incited instant reaction in the Allied Army because they knew Malaby was on a non-combat mission that day. Regardless of its exact details, 
Malabi's death was a significant turning point in the hostilities in Surabaya, and a catalyst for the battle to come. The British ordered an Indonesian surrender, and on 10 November they launched a large retaliatory attack. Chapter 3 Section 3 Main Battle Lieutenant General Sir Philip Christensen was angered when he heard that Brigadier Malaby had been killed in Surabaya. During a lull in the fighting, the British brought in reinforcements and evacuated the internees. An additional two brigades of the 5th Indian Division led by Major General Robert Mansur were deployed with Sherman and, and Stuart tanks, two cruisers and three destroyers in support. At dawn on 10 November, a day now commemorated in Indonesia's Heroes' Day, British troops began a methodical advance through the city under the cover of naval and air bombardment. Fighting was heavy, with British troops clearing buildings room by room and consolidating their gains. Despite the fanatical resistance of the Indonesians, half of the city was conquered in three days and the fighting was over in three weeks. Estimates of Indonesian deaths range between 6,300 and 15,000, and perhaps 200,000 fled the devastated city. British Indian casualties totaled 295 killed and missing. Chapter 4 Aftermath The Republicans lost much of their manpower, but it was the loss of weaponry that would severely hamper Republican military efforts for the remainder of the independence struggle. The battle for Surabaya was the bloodiest single engagement of the war, and demonstrated the determination of the ragtag nationalist forces, their sacrificial resistance became a symbol and rallying cry for the revolution. It also made the British reluctant to be sucked into a war, considering how stretched their resources in Southeast Asia were during the period after the Japanese surrender, within a few years, in fact, Britain openly supported the Republican cause in the United Nations. It was also a watershed for the Dutch as it removed any doubt that the Republic was a well-organized resistance with popular support. In November 1946, the last British troops left Indonesia. The Heroes Monument in Surabaya commemorates this battle. The 10th of November is now commemorated in Indonesia as Heroes Day, in memory of the battle. The Scottish American Indonesian sympathizer Kshit Tantri also witnessed the Battle of Surabaya, which she later recorded in her memoirs Revolt in Paradise. Prior to the fighting, she and a group of Indonesian rebels associated with Bung Tomo had established a secret radio station in the city which broadcast pro Indonesian Republic messages that were directed at the British soldiers in the city. She noted that several British soldiers were unhappy with the Dutch for misleading them about the Indonesian Republicans being Japanese puppets and extremists. Following the British bombardment of the city, Tantri contacted several foreign diplomats and commercial attaches from Denmark, Switzerland, the Soviet Union, and Sweden. These countries had representatives in Surabaya. They agreed to inform their respective governments about the fighting in Surabaya and to take part in a joint broadcast protesting continuation of the fighting and calling for a ceasefire. Chapter 5 In Popular Culture The Battle of Surabaya has become the theme and background of several Indonesian films, such as Cinema of Indonesia 1990 film Surabaya 45 Merdeka Atau Mati. The battle was shown briefly in the 2013 film Sang Kiai, which depicted the death of Brigadier Malabi at the hands of an Indonesian militia from Loska Hizbullah and the first day of the battle itself. In 2013, the Battle of Surabaya was commemorated in a 2D animated film called The Battle of Surabaya, which was scheduled to be released in August 2015. The film is produced by Mohamed Suayanto and focuses on a teenage courier named Musa. On a side note, the Walt Disney Studios took an interest in this animated cartoon, and the movie is now part of Disney's distribution franchise. It was stated that the film would have an English voice-over for distribution outside Indonesia, after the movie's original release in Indonesia.